Now I give the floor to the International Service for Human Rights. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. ISHO wishes to thank Special Rapporteur Alston for his detailed reports. Country visits can be powerful tools for national level change when conducted in good faith and with full respect for the independence and expertise of the mandate holder. In particular, Mr. Special Rapporteur, we welcome your emphasis on the importance of inclusion and civil society participation. Unfortunately, we note that in your country report on China, you raise concerns on both fronts. The progress China has made in poverty alleviation is remarkable, but you note you had no means to access authoritative data in that regard. In the area of gender equality, the report is clear. To officials, this is simply, quote, not a serious issue, end quote. Employment discrimination is a barrier to overcoming poverty within, for individuals with disabilities, yet you are only able to discuss this with state officials. Given these challenges, how can other special procedures and governments constructively and credibly engage with China on these issues? The report does not fully address concerns of rural and ethnic minority communities who face yawning gaps in protection of their economic, social, and cultural rights. When development policies are implemented in minority areas, the affected communities are not consulted, and local grassroots organizations are often threatened or shut down if they engage in monitoring activities. Provision of accurate, disaggregated, transparent data is a global best practice. Classifying statistics as state secrets is not. We agree that China should ensure rights are protected in practice by ending the current, quote, law and order pincher movement that targets civil society. What advice would you share with defenders who seek to sustain their work despite these challenges? We agree, indeed, that the role of an NHRI and the establishment of an NHRI in line with the Paris Principles, as recommended in your report and by seven states through the UPR and the Committee on ESC Rights, could be essential in this regard. Finally, it is essential that China cease using arbitrary detention and enforced disappearance to silence dissent or criticism of poverty-related policies or any other. Can you share any meaningful responses you received related to intimidation and reprisals against Chinese human rights defenders and their families linked to your visit? Thank you. Thank you.